Welcome to this Pentecost Worship Across Lutheran Church. So glad that you are tuning in. If you printed the bulletin at home, please follow the bold lines as your own lines. Also note that after the confession and forgiveness, I did not print the proclamation of grace and forgiveness. That was my error. But fortunately, I know it by heart. So um, you can, you know, just stop the process there for me to say those words or proclaim those words would be a better way to put it. And then also, we are celebrating Holy Communion, so if you have bread, wine, and juice handy at your home, that would be great as well. Again, thank you for tuning in, and we will begin now with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trust in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on your own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And your spirit, lead us. So we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn is O Day Full of Grace. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray together. 
Almighty and ever-living God, you fulfill the promise of Easter by sending the gift of your Holy Spirit. Look upon your people gathered in prayer, open to receive the Spirit's flame. May it come to rest in our hearts and heal the divisions of word and tongue, that with one voice and one song we may praise your name and join thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the first reading. The reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Christ. Well, it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Ever get caught in a situation where you just do not know what to say? Where you strive to find the right words to somehow make sense of it all, and yet you cannot? It's where I am this morning. I know how to speak. I've always known how to speak, and I know what I want to say, and I think I can say it, but really I think the problem more is with what to pray for, or even how to pray. These last few days, I, with, along with everyone else in this country, has just been absorbed 
with one event after another. And I posted on Facebook the other day that I'm trusting, trusting what St. Paul says, that the Holy Spirit intercedes with us with sighs too deep for words and prays for us when we just don't know how to pray. And I do know how to pray. I can pray certainly for George Floyd's family. I can pray for the folks whose businesses have been ransacked and looted. I can pray for healing for our nation. I can pray for relief from the pandemic. I can pray for this congregation. I can pray for each and every person here, and yet I cannot find myself able to pray for a person who probably needs it more than anyone else. And that's Derek Chauvin himself. And yet, I just cannot get there. And I don't know why, and it bothers me, because that in itself is a sin that I have to admit to, but that's where I am this day. Like everyone else, we saw with sheer horror the eight minutes of that video and those pictures. And granted, I'm not a police officer. I do not put my life on the line and go to work every day in public service with that risk. I do not know all the mitigating circumstances by any means, but I do know what I saw. And what I saw was indifference. And I preached before that the opposite of love is not hate, but rather is indifference. And I witnessed indifference to, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. We all witnessed indifference to, I can't breathe. Indifference to the eyewitnesses who were saying, stop it. Indifference to his own words, I can't breathe. We saw it all. And look what the indifference did. A man died and the world blew up. So where do we go from here? How do we make sense of the senseless? What do we do with this news on what's supposed to be an occasion of joy in this strange, strange year called 2020 that seems to be a month long of Sundays with one headline after another, huh? Where do we go and what? do we do? I keep on going back to how apropos our readings are for today, especially in light of all the headlines, but I want to go back really to the amazement of those in Jerusalem who are asking, how can we each hear in our own language? And I'm going to say something very, very controversial, but it is on my mind. I can't help but wonder now if the loud voices and the violence, our own native language being put back upon us, that we're able to hear what so many people for so many centuries in our country experienced from us. Because to be a minority in this country is to either suffer from indifference or from violence. And maybe now, with the nation literally on fire, Maybe it's a chance for us to at long last hear in our own native voice what it's like not to be seen or heard. I don't know if that's true or not, and by any means it's not a justification for the looting and the rampages and the violence and the fires, but it may indeed be a call for us to long last here in our own language what our siblings have felt all along. You see, the thing is, I think we've gotten it wrong all along as well because we strive for this thing called unity. And we're supposed to have unity in Jesus. Being united in Christ is very, very different from the other unity. The other unity is just a myth. It cannot happen. But we've been afraid of the diversity, which in itself is beautiful. 
I think what we have to do is we have to come to terms with our own racism in us. Yes, we're all racist. I'm a racist, you're a racist, we're all racist, whether we want to admit it or not. And I say that because the reality is we always feel more comfortable with people who are like us. And that comfort is a sign of racism. And that comfort is also a sign that we fear, for unknown reasons, the other. And that fear is also our sin. Because the reality is that God made each and every one of us different from the other. Everyone of every place is created in an image pleasing to God. And if we can't see the beauty in that image, then we can't see the beauty in God. And we've missed the mark for century after century after century, when we fail to see the other as beautiful, the different as normal, the different as complementary rather than as adversary. Because when the differences come together, oh wow, what a beautiful kaleidoscope it is. And that's the ideal that God intended all along. Again, at Pentecost, it wasn't about becoming one. Rather, it was very much the opposite because each heard in their own languages and God said, let the differences exist. The differences are good. And that, perhaps, is what we have to hear in the cries and anguish of this week and of these days. Again, by no means am I excusing the violence. By no means am I excusing the fires. By no means am I excusing the looting. But by no means either am I excusing our indifference and our inability to hear what the others are crying. It's our holy vocation, it's our calling, it's our duty as children of the Spirit as having life breathed into by that Holy Spirit when we were baptized and marked and sealed with the cross of Christ forever, to look at the other in joy, but not only to also look at the other, but also to hear the other in our language and hear what it is for them to be. It's also to see them and ourselves is equally loved children of God, precious in God's sight. I ask, so where do we go from here with these nice, nice words? Well, we go here as Easter cost people, as Easter cost people, that's a good word, Pentecost and Easter combined. We go here as people set free by the Spirit, knowing that ultimately God has already won. See, when things are this bad, when things look like they can't get any worse, we have to remember that God is still in control, really. And that the battle's already been won through the cross and resurrection. And that ultimately we have nothing to fear, except for, as Roosevelt said, or Churchill said, I can't remember which one, but fear itself. And I'm sure that sentiment is just echoing what God has said all along when he says, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. So don't be afraid to listen. Don't be afraid to be changed by what we hear in our native language. Don't be afraid to be a healing agent as well. Because it's so easy for us to just put up our hands and say, well, what can we do? Well, I don't know yet. But I'm sure that we can do something. We can begin with prayer for certain, but at the same time we can leave being different. We can leave with the Spirit infusing difference in us so we can never again be the same. And at least when things like this happen, we can't jump to conclusions no longer, but perhaps we can hear the anguish and pain of the other side and never be indifferent to anyone else ever again. And that's where Christian unity begins. That's where our Easter story leads us to be. That's how we're called to be. With that, what else can we say but to God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Spirit of the living God, thou 
Please respond with hear our prayer to the petition, Lord, in your mercy, as we pray the prayers of intercession. Rejoicing in the resurrection, let us remember in prayer the church, the world, and all those in need. Come, Holy Spirit, poured out upon the whole church. Inspire us to prophecy, witness, and service, to new visions and dreams, that through our ministry the world might know of your love. Continue to be with our congregation and the entire church as we strive to minister in new and better ways through the course of the pandemic. Give us courageous witness with loving words so we can be a healing balm during times of tension. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, to all the nations of the world. Inspire them to peace and to justice for their own citizens and for their enemies. We pray for our nation that often seems stuck in division and hostility toward neighbors. Fill us with your spirit so that we can be agents of healing to friend and stranger. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, bring peace to those in need, comfort to those who grieve, courage to the hopeless, and healing to those who are ill, especially those we name aloud or silently in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy, come, Holy Spirit, and inspire this congregation to the ministry of peacemaking in this community, that through our ministry, reconciliation may be found. Guide us and lead us as we branch out to the recovery community and assist with mental illness. Lord, in your mercy, Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire us in remembrance of those who gave their lives on battlefields for the sake of freedom. Lead us all to be generous with our lives for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, and at the last bring us together with all the faithful departed into the warm embrace of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Be with our community as we open our doors soon. Let us be diligent in our protocols to protect those who enter our building and give us profound patience with one another as we figure things out together. Sustain us with the hope through this pandemic as there will be an end to it. And once again, singing and laughter will rise beyond the ceiling. Until then, protect us from weariness and foolish decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With alleluias in our hearts and on our lips, we commend to your care all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We'll continue now with the offerings. So if you're at home and during this musical interlude, would like to write a check and address the envelope and send it in. Uh, to Monday morning, that would be great. Otherwise, you can also use your Give Plus app, or you can explore automated giving on a regular schedule um, and take a look at the peak of the week and the website, and we'll give instructions on that as well. We do appreciate your generosity. Things are getting a little bit uncomfortable now, so we need folks, actually, if you're capable and able to chip in, we'd appreciate that very, very much. Thank you.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, those are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. God, who led Israel with pillar of cloud by day and fire by night, you lead us in ways of righteousness. You have taught us that wandering does not mean that we are lost. You have taught us that the journey is just as important as the destination. We give thanks that you call us your people. Jesus, giver of peace that surpasses all understanding, your peace has settled on this gathering today. We have come because you first came to us. We gather to hear your word just as the disciples gathered in Jerusalem. We have both heard your word of eternal life and your word that sends us out. We have thanks that you trust us with your name. Holy Spirit, who prays on our behalf when we have no words, you are both our counsel and might. You convict us with truth when we forget your word. You lead us with wisdom when we do not know where to go. You comfort us when we are without hope. We give thanks that you are in us and around us and ever present with us. Now, as the people gathered in your name, we pray that you would make your presence known to us. Holy Spirit, as you have done before, breathe your breath of life through this place, making this simple bread and cup communion with you. May God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit abide with us as we share this meal. May this meal bind us to you and to one another. In the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to share, and said, This is the blood of my new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you meet of me. And we continue as he pray. We continue to pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends and family at home, whoever has the bread, when you distribute it, please say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And whoever has the cup, or the wine, or the juice, please say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Friends of Jesus, come to the table, receive nourishment for your journey, and we continue with the meal. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. And empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you in eternal love. Amen. And before our last song, thank you very, very much these last few months with your patience on our online worship. Next week, God willing, we'll be gathering together in person for worship. 
We'll be sending out information this week about the protocol. We'll make sure that everyone feels as safe and comfortable, as comfortable as possible. However, we also understand if you do not feel safe coming back here, uh, we'll continue streaming the worship, we'll not streaming, recording it, and it'll be broadcast later on Sunday. But if you can be here at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, we'll be spread throughout the whole building. All the windows and doors will be open for air exchange. Masks will be worn as well. And unfortunately, we have to refrain from singing, but we can gather together again. And again, this week, be on the lookout for all kinds of information about what it's going to look like when we can be back here and also next Sunday, if you want me to stay, there's going to be a vote for that. And so it's your opportunity, Jim, to get rid of me now or, you know, have me stay. And so um, if you can be here for the congregational meeting following worship, that would be great as well. Also, please keep the Dykstras in your prayer. Mary's um, brother passed away this week, and so I know she'd appreciate our prayers as well. Also, stay tuned, as always, we'll keep you updated, too, on what's happening here online. Wednesday worship will re probably resume in person on June 10th. We'll just keep an eye on COVID numbers and all that fun stuff as well. But again, you folks rock. Thank you for your patience these last few months of this online worship. We're looking forward to resuming in-person gathering very, very soon. I also want to thank the following people who led us in worship today. Will Dar, our great assistant for, at worship again, wonderful, wonderful job assisting minister. Ron Campbell, who's our tech guru, thank you, Ron. Um, Jim and Mara Revoir for being our congregational singers. Terry Peterson for singing special music today. Well done, thank you very much. And of course, Kathy for playing as well. You all rock. We'll continue now with our last song, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. <laughs> 